Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. We recently had the chance to talk with Dr. Theodore Ho, currently at Stanford University, to discuss his work on stem cells and neuroscience. In this video, we will discuss his paper where he and his team looked at autophagy and how it impacts stem cell aging. Here is the paper. Autophagy maintains the metabolism and function of young and old hematopoietic stem cells. Before we jump into the paper, what are hema hematopoietic stem cells? Hematopoietic stem cells are those which give rise to our blood and are located in our bone marrow. Like all stem cells, they have two key characteristics. They can replicate themselves. And second, they are able to differentiate into other cell types. In the case of HSCs, all the types of cells that we have in our blood, such as the various kind of white and red blood cells. As we age, our hematopoietic stem cells lose the ability to regenerate blood and promote disease development. Autophagy is critical to protecting HSCs from metabolic stress. In the study, the authors show that the loss of autophagy in HSCs causes an accumulation of mitochondria and an activated metabolic state. Now, in general, more mitochondria might seem a good thing, but not in this case, as it leads to accelerated differentiation. This in turn impairs the self-renewal capabilities. As mentioned, self-renewal is one of the key capabilities of stem cells, and once they've differentiated, they lose the ability. In aged mice, the majority of stem cells appear to be like this. However, one-third exhibited high autophagy levels and maintain a low metabolic state with robust long-term regeneration of potential of young HSCs. Stem cell exhaustion is one of the hallmarks of aging and blood is critical for many aspects of health and needs to be maintained by production of new cells. In adult HSCs are rare and live in the bone marrow where they should be in a quiescent state here, glycolytic refers to the anaerobic metabolism of sugar, which occurs in the cell body and does not require mitochondria. With age, HSCs lose their regenerative ability, although they are able to maintain the blood supply, albeit with aging phenotypes. Let's look at a couple of key findings from the paper. The first thing is that they found that if autophagy is not active, then the cell will have an excess of mitochondria and that these would become elongated as in the CKO image on the right. The effect of these mitochondria is to make the cell more active and ultimately push it into differentiation. Second was that a third of the cells maintained a high level autophagy and continued to behave like young cells. To test whether the cells with autophagy would behave differently, they also knocked out all the HSCs in a mouse and then transplanted either the cells with high autophagy, AT high in the diagram, or low autophagy, AT low, into this mouse. They saw that the AT low cells quickly became exhausted, while the AT high ones were able to produce many more blood cells and repopulate the blood of the mouse. As they say in the discussion section, removing activated mitochondria, which controls the oxidative metabolism, maintains the stemness of the cell and its ability to regenerate. So autophagy becomes central to maintaining HSC quiescence. As we get older, this becomes even more important because the lack of autophagy leads to overactive oxphos metabolism, where oxphos is oxidative phosphorylation and is the metabolic process carried on in the mitochondria. This leads to the more aged blood phenotypes. While all the cells are capable of autophagy, only a third activate it and maintain the robust regeneration potential similar to young HSCs. Interestingly, they found that with the correct stimulation, the stem cells could be made to migrate from one state to another. The findings point to a way to target HSCs with rejuvenation therapies to improve the function of old HSCs. If we can understand why some cells activate autophagy and others do not, we may be able to influence the outcome or indeed convert one type to the other. When we talked, Dr. Ho also mentioned that further tests had shown that similar mechanisms were also true for other stem cell types. I do hope that you found the video informative. We will surely be releasing our interview with Dr. Ho, where he discusses this paper, as well as some of the very interesting work that he is now doing in neuroscience. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. 
I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.